Right at the end of last week, I brought you guys a video that gave you some relatively early details about Battlefield 5 Update 5.2. Now, we spoke about plans to overhaul the game's weapon balance. That has now been discussed at great length by the community since the announcement was made. We spoke about player acquisition changes at close range. We spoke about improvements to spotting awareness and a few other things as well. There was quite a lot to digest from that video. And over the last week or so, a few more details have come out as to what we can expect in Update 5.2. So in this video today, we're going to cover off those things. OK, then let's get into things. Something brand new, first of all, and genuinely something that I did not expect to be happening for Battlefield 5 at this moment in time. It took me completely by surprise when I saw this. It appears that Update 5.2 it's not going to solely focus on updates to the Pacific element of the game. In a reply on Reddit, DICE developer Kenterak, he revealed that players should look out for the patch notes for this update if they want to learn about some changes to the Aerodrome map. Now, Aerodrome, in my opinion, is one of the poorer maps in Battlefield 5. It does lack quite a lot of cover in almost all areas, and it's got some massive long lines of sight that are completely open to being exploited by recon players that then have no incentive to move around because all they can do is just look down that line of sight and see enemy players all game and why would you move if you're going to get quite a few headshots by looking down there. The map is ultimately lacking some proper undulations of the terrain, it's lacking solid cover and potentially even aerial combat. I mean, it is called Aerodrome after all and there are lots of grounded aeroplanes on this map so Maybe air combat wouldn't be amiss, but what do I know? Interestingly, you might not actually know this, the working title for this map was called Fox Hunt, and I think that's after the German general Erwin Rommel, and he was known as the Desert Fox for the role that he played in the German campaign to conquer North Africa during World War II. I think that's the link, I'm not 100% sure, but a little bit of Battlefield 5 trivia for you. The player that was asking the question suggested more cover being added to the flags. The fact that the map is currently very badly balanced between the two teams, it favours the Germans. They have three flags very close to their deployment compared to the British, who only have two of those. And that potentially adding more fortifications to the map might help with more cover in areas outside of objectives. Now, those are largely the same points that were given by Danny on PC in a very long Twitter thread that he posted back in the summer. He pointed out a lot of flaws on the aerodrome map and how they could relatively simply be improved by just changing a couple of things around. Who knows what this change to aerodrome is actually going to look like, but Danny did make some very good points in his Twitter thread, so I thought I'd shout that out here. As I said earlier, however, I just didn't expect this kind of work to come from DICE when they seem to be so focused on the Pacific theatre right now. With that being said, if DICE is working to improve the content that they have already released, and we do end up seeing these aerodrome changes arrive in Update 5.2, then this could actually be really, really good news for Year 2 of Battlefield 5. We still have plenty of content left releasing for the Pacific chapter, potentially two more maps and at least five weapons and gadgets. So plenty to come for the Pacific and there will be more content coming after that as well. But if older content is also being improved, that's going to provide more reason for players to engage with that older content. And that adds even more value to the game. And of course, these are free updates as well. So you're not paying for any of these improvements. If older content can be improved, that increases the appeal and it brings it up to the standard of the new content that's being rolled out for Battlefield 5. That would really prove that DICE is running a proper live service for Battlefield 5, even if it has taken close to a year for it to, to get to that point. But let's face it, there's no way that DICE would have done this for older games in the franchise. Looking back to Battlefield 1 as an example, the last expansion, Apocalypse, the SOM map and the Caporetto maps, in my opinion, they were not very well designed, with mostly flat ground being used as a shooting range for whatever team happened to be defending on those maps. And they went through the community test environment. There was virtually no updates whatsoever to those maps, despite some solid community feedback. But here in Battlefield 5, we are seeing some updates to a map over a year after it was released. So 
that's got to be a good sign. And it does show that DICE is committed to improving this game in all areas, as opposed to just trying to move past those things and, and add brand new content instead. Then, secondly, and this isn't strictly linked to Update 5.2 as a brand new piece of information, but I think it's 100% worth mentioning because everyone's talking about it at the moment. Early next week, DICE will be addressing the community feedback given on their proposed TTK weapon balance changes for Battlefield 5. They're going to come out and they're going to give us some more information. The initial blog post that went out last week with those damage graphs on them, the one that I showed in my video, at the time, I said that that wasn't a particularly great way to introduce a huge balance overhaul to the game because the blog post left out some of that vital information that would have given a much better picture of DICE's plans. We didn't have any information about recoil or rate of fire or any of the ammo changes that are supposed to be coming as well. Now, it's my understanding that those plans that would have been part of the 5.2 patch notes, they're sort of being brought forward in time in order to have a deeper conversation with the community. Now that to me shows that DICE is aware of the kind of impact that these changes could actually have on the game. So for better or for worse, we're gonna have a more detailed conversation about this change before it ends up in the game. And that at least means the community will be able to understand where DICE is coming from and perhaps see the data behind the changes that are being put in place. Alongside that, there will also be a separate discussion happening around the introduction of community games. This is DICE's proposed rental server system for Battlefield 5. And I'm sure, yet again, that will be another hot topic for the core community waiting for this feature. We still don't really know what this is going to look like when it releases. And it seems that that is the information we're going to be getting next week. And I believe that Jeff Braddock is going to lead that conversation. So both of those things, a further bit of information about the weapon balance changes and information about community games, that will be happening next week. So keep your attention locked on the channel for videos on both of those topics. And then thirdly, we've now got some extra information about some spotting changes happening in Update 5.2. And these are going to go alongside those improvements to knowing when you're spotted. So I showed you that outline around the minimap for Update 5.2 that tells you if you're spotted. These spotting changes go hand in hand with that. So we've now got some extra information. According to DICE developer Drunksy and a tweet that he posted last week, the duration of spotting flares, the radius of spotting flares, and the duration of active spotting are all being reduced with update 5.2. Active spotting, that comes from elements like the recon spotting scope gadget or the recon eagle eye trait. There will also be some nerfs made to the spotting from vehicle flares. They're going to scale down similar to those from the flare gun, but the base duration and the radius of the vehicle flares will still be higher than that of the flare gun. These changes should not be confused with that new close range player acquisition icon system that was detailed in the blog post last week. And again, I did show you that in my video. Those two systems, they're working completely separately. That caused its own debate, which I think will be addressed in some way by DICE next week as well. There is an element of this new player acquisition stuff that plays into gunplay changes because if guns are going to be changing alongside the visibility of players in close quarters, then that's really going to affect how you approach certain situations. So I wouldn't be surprised to see DICE touch on that topic as well. So then, it feels like next week is going to be quite a big one for Battlefield 5, but this time it's going to be big for completely different reasons compared to the last time we had a big week. About a month ago, we were all raring to go for the launch week of Pacific content, and we pretty much got the best update that Battlefield 5 has ever had. Next week, it's not excitement in terms of, yay, we're getting new content, it's more just apprehension about how this game is going to change with update 5.2. We're going to learn more about the super controversial weapon balance changes and maybe get some insight into why DICE decided to do it at this point and at least get some more detail than what we got last week in that other blog post. And we're also going to be hearing about community games as well, which, as I mentioned, is definitely going to be a hot topic when it's discussed. So make sure you're tuned into the channel next week 
hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed and make sure you've got notifications switched on. Click that bell and make sure they are on. I'll be covering all the news and information we get. So expect videos to be posted pretty much all the way through next week. And I'll also be launching my next merch design next week. And I'll give you a little hint here on the screen of what that actually looks like. So you'll see me shilling for yet another design here on the channel. There will be Black Friday discounts for this design as an extra note, so if you missed the first design, you'll be able to get this one a little bit cheaper this time around. But a big thanks for watching today, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.